The next day, Thursday, uh, our first stop was the 16th Street Baptist Church. And all of us went inside the church and we saw a video. Monica, how did you feel to be inside that church? It was sad, like, just to know that you could be putting on your makeup at Sunday school and one second you're there with your sister and that second your sis you can't find your sister and you find out she's dead. It was just really sad that people could be so hateful. After it was all over, we, st we were in there and we, we sat on the steps and we sang, We Shall Overcome. After we visited the church, we went to the Birmingham Civil Rights Museum. It's like I've never seen a museum that was so so intricately laid out the history with all like the different like displays they had. All they had all this video, audio. They had they were appealing to all like the senses. Uh, I know that some of you visited the Kelly Ingram Park. Can anyone talk about the experience? They had great statues, and the one that really got to me was the part that says, "We are not afraid of your jails." Uh, tell me a little bit about your project. My project was entitled Theory of Nonviolence, and it followed the the idea of nonviolence, both like used by first used by Gandhi, and then like Martin Luther King visited India and then brought it back here home. Okay, we're gonna take a look at that. Okay. I've thought long and hard about it. I think that was the best, best approach in, in the, during that time because I feel that we had taken a different approach, we'd probably been to a disadvantage. Marching peacefully for voters' rights, better treatment, and equality ended with water hoses beating on backs, dogs biting on the command of their owners, and unjust imprisonment of many teens. Of course, they profess they're not afraid of your jails and ignored the impediments that threatened their success. I still struggle today uh, based on the discrimination I experienced as a young person. Uh, and from time to time, it comes back up. Things remind me of those incidents that happened years ago sometimes, and I haven't really choked back some of the things that to be quite honest with. Uh, sometimes it's anger, sometimes it's uh, resentment, uh, but I then sort of compose myself. Life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. Nonviolence to the extent that I learned about it through Dr. King and, and all the things he was doing and others involved in the movement, but to the extent that I, most like many of us, were raised to defend yourself. Uh, but as I grew older, my, also my faith belief, I learned then that that's not the answer. Uh, and so I learned then to walk away. When will you be satisfied? We can never be satisfied as long as the Negro is the victim of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. My sister started taking me to the meeting of SNCC. She was a SNCC member and she would take me with her. And they tried to teach us the principles of nonviolence. I grew up in George Washington Carver Homes on, and I was eight, nine years old. By the time they tried to teach me, I grew up in the project. You walk out that door, cause that was the only one I could grasp, you know, turn the other cheek. You walk out that door turning that cheek, you be doing this all day long. Period. You had to establish quickly that you weren't gonna take that. So I couldn't get, get I couldn't grasp that. I've learned later that it, um, it means much more than that, than just somebody hit you, you don't hit them back. But I couldn't get that in the sink at all. Rebel Bevel, James Bevel used to like to tell a story. I beat him on his knee. Um, he was yelling at me, and I beat him. I was on the floor, so the, you know that's as far as I could get. But <laughs> he was yelling at me, and like the police would yell at you when you would, they would arrest you. And he was trying to get me to get used to it. I know that now, but I didn't know that then. Now I've come a long way since then. Violence in any form is wrong. I know that. For those who fought alongside them. One who breathed nonviolence, bringing it from the east right back home to the west. Gandhi, Martin Luther King, all professed that nonviolence, nonviolence is the best. Uh, 
civil rights movement, as you well know, was based on nonviolence and so forth. And so many of those persons who, again, had to stand in front of people who spat up on them, who kicked them, who, who hit them with all kinds of objects, bats, and clubs, etc., etc., and never did anything at all. That, to me, shows more courage, more strength, and more perseverance than anything I could ever think of in terms of defending my own self. And so I think, when I think about those things, I then begin to say, okay, I can get through this. This, this, this is nothing. I mean, what I'm talking about is really nothing compared to what others have gone through. In the end, they all won, not for themselves, but for their children and grandchildren, while now they all thank the one who helped them there. Thank you. That was a really, really nice project. Uh, Friday was the last day of um, our trip, and uh, we visited the National Civil Rights Museum where Martin Luther King was assassinated. It, was that it actually showed a more personal side to, to Martin Luther King. It showed that he was like uh, he, a human being, like he, the civil rights was like taking his toll on him. Where um, apparently he like started smoking and he he kind of got a little depressed on occasion. What I also liked is that it also it had a section where it spotlight not only uh, Martin Luther King but other civil rights activists for all kinds of groups. They had like gay rights activists, Harvey Milk. They had I believe they had Gandhi in there as yeah, well. Yeah, And Malcolm X. As soon as we left the Lorraine Motel, did you feel like something was accomplished at the end of the trip and the day? We kind of brought it all together, just like, that's what the fight was for. They did it all for us. I'm grateful that they were willing to put themselves in danger to make sure that today that we all have rights that they didn't have and that we take for granted today. Well, that's all we have for our program today. Thank you very much for the panel to join us. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs>